Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Natasha Binti Muhammad Yusuf. So today I'm going to present about abnormal radiographic image evaluation. So before I explain to you guys about the image criteria of abdomen, I want to explain to you guys about the difference between KUB X-ray and abdomen X-ray. Why is it abdomen, not the KUB? So first there are three main difference to differentiate different shape different shape between abdomen and KUB. This first exposure factor, bowel preparation and collimation. So first for the exposure factor, for KUB it is very crucial to it is very crucial to visualize soft tissue, especially kidney outline. For the abdomen, it's so crucial as KUB yet require exposure to able to visualize soft tissue. So for this exposure factor, KUB is very crucial because it is to see the outline, the kidney, the outline of the kidney. Meanwhile, for the abdomen, it is just to see the soft tissue of the abdomen. Okay. Next for the bowel preparation, bowel preparation for KUB is is must to do to look for the kidney. Uh, KUB is stand for kidney urethral bladder, so bowel preparation is needed because to see the flow of the urinary system, to see to visualize to visualize the flow of the urinary system. So we uh, with bowel preparation, we can see the flow of a urinary system from the kidney, urethra to the bladder. Meanwhile, for the abdomen. Is no need to do the bowel preparation because it is just to see the soft tissue of the abdomen. Next, for the collimation. Collimation for KUB, the site collimate until axis and abdomen and still skimaging. And top of the top and bottom of the collimation for KUB and abdomen from the process to surface pubis. Next. For image criteria of true AP abdomen supine, uh, the criteria is almost same like the pelvic pelvic radiograph, which is there is iliac wing, apparatus foramen, sacrum, still spine, distance left and right particles, spinous process. So, uh, for abdomen, there is one difference that differentiate between abdomen and pelvic, which is radiograph can see like abdomen not the pelvic so the the structure that must included is spinous process of 11 thoracic vertebra 11 thoracic vertebra until apparatus foramen okay true ap why is it true ap because the iliac wing is seen bilateral apparatus foramen seen bilateral this is apparatus foramen sacrum is centered within the inlet of pelvis and aligned with surfaces pubis. For is the spine is not overlap. It's, it's overlap. Okay, sorry. Then the distance between uh, left, distance left and right pedicles to spinous process are equal. It is it is in the same distance. So there is a image criteria of true AP abdomen supine. Next is image criteria of abdomen rotated to left. The criteria is almost same like the pelvic, which is there is iliac wing, iliac wing, abdominal foramen, sacrum, is the spine. So, so for rotated to left, iliac wing, this side of iliac wing. Left side of iliac wing is bigger than the right side. And then, the sacrum, you can, you can see in this box, the sacrum is not aligned to the surface pubis, but it is, uh, it is situated closer to the right side. Then, there is the spines, it's not overlap. There is a bit of a little of is the spines here and then uh, distance of right particles this right particles to spinous process is lesser than the distance between left particles to spinous process so this radiograph prove that the 
patient is in rotated to left LPO. Okay. Next for image criteria of abdomen rotated to right. So the left wing at the right side is bigger than the left side. Then of the foramen, we the left side. I I highlight this because it more visualized here. The left side is bigger than the right side. Sacrum, if you can see in the box here, the sacrum is the sacrum is uh the situated it situated closer to the left side. It don't line to the specific pubis. Then the distance here, the distance of the left side. Of pedicles to spinous process is lesser than the right side of pedicles to spinous process. So this radiograph proven that the patient is in rotated patient in position of rotated to right, which is RPO. Okay. So next, I will explain to you guys about the difference between abdomen episupine and abdomen epi erect. So there is several difference that I took that I found which is first the central ray is for abdomen supine epi supine is a level of iliac crest meanwhile for the epi erect to inch above iliac crest level of iliac crest to inch above iliac crest Okay, next for the included structure, the AP supine the included structure must from 11 trachea vertebra to a plotter foramen. Meanwhile, for the AP erect, the included structure is 9 trachea vertebra and must include the diaphragma. Okay, okay, next last. Lastly, the airflow level for AP supine is less visualized can see the several uh, we will get at every level meanwhile for the epi erect is more visualized we can see more visualized the every level for epi erect okay okay now we are going to step our image evaluation which is we use pacement P A C E M A N. So for this radiograph, for this radiograph, I choose abdomen episupine to I evaluate the radiograph. So first for P, which is projection, this radiograph, this is a radiograph of a uh, of AP projection of abdomen. Why I say it? A P projection of abdomen because it is included spinous process of 11 circuit vertebra to a plotter foramen. That is the first, uh, there is the first criteria of abdomen. Why is it A P? Because uh, we can see there is a wing seen bilateral, head of femur seen bilateral and the sacrum at the center of pelvic inlet so that's why this radiograph is a p projection of abdomen next for positioning uh, the positioning the positioning of this projection is lpo why i why i say this lpo because we can see that the iliac wing or before before that before I explain more further uh, this radiograph I get I I took I got from the image evaluation lab so I I had measured the distance between distance of the iliac wing so when I measure it the left side is bigger than the right side and the after after the foramen for the left side is lesser lesser than the right side 
and sacrum. You can see in this box, the sacrum is not really aligned to the symphysis pubis. It is a bit, a bit towards to the right side. You can see this. It's not really situated aligned with symphysis pubis. Okay. Next for the laser trochanter, we can see this laser trochanter. Laser trochanter is where is in profile. So the leg of the patient in external rotation. It's still spine is not overlap. Uh, in the red graph, I can we can see that there is a little bit of it's still spines here. And distance between pedicles, uh, right pedicles is lesser than the left pedicles. So, we can conclude that the positioning of patient for this radiograph is LPO. So, to improve this, we must rotate the patient's body to the right side until axis equal distance to the tabletop. And for the leg, rotate patient's leg internally 15 degree because the leg of the patient is in external rotation so we must uh, rotate the patient's leg internally 15 degree next a uh, next a alignment so um, the radiograph has no any collimation so there is so the X-ray tube uh, alignment for X-ray tube versus fascia and X-ray tube versus IR, we, we cannot be determined because there is no collimation. Meanwhile, uh, for the IR versus IR and patient, which is CR, we can conclude that it is incorrect because the superior and inferior level is not equal. Superior and inferior is not equal, and the left and right side, and uh, right and left side is not equal. I have measured it from this film that I got before this, so the result is not equal for both. Superior and inferior is not same. Right and left side is not same. So standard center ray for this for this radiograph is for this projection is level of electrics. For collimation, I have divided it into three, which is for superior, inferior, and lateral. For superior, we must include we must include T eleven. T11 here, ribs and LCM, which is L3. For inferior, we must include sacrum, coccyx, obturator foramen, EC tuberosity. And for the lateral, we must include the iliac crest for the lateral side. Iliac crest, axis, and greater trochanter. We can see it. By the lateral side. It is for collimation. Next is uh, E exposure factor. So for exposure factor, the KVP use is over penetrate for penetration and radiographic contrast. It is because the bony cortical outline for thin structure, which is ileum, cannot be seen. Meanwhile, for the thick structure, which is head of femur, can be seen. So next, the MAS use is adequate for detail and density. This is because the bony trabecular pattern, the bony trabecular pattern for thin structure, which is ilium, can be seen. Uh, it can be seen as spider web here, a little spider web here. Next, for uh, thick structure, which is head of femur, also can be seen. So, to, for this photograph, the exposure factor is too much over penetrate. Okay, so to improve this, we must decrease uh, KVP 15% and maintain the MS. 
next next for m m is for markers so we can see these markers in right right side so r for, uh, is for right side okay there, there is evidence of anatomical plumber marker shown this is plumber marker it is right annotation and right side of the marker and it is out of the region of interest you just don't want to see the abdomen so it is out of ROI next is aesthetic aesthetic so the film use is 35 43 cm it is sufficient and there is no artifact in his in this radiograph lastly is n num n num name sorry uh the name we can see this in here so patient's name and id date of examination and place of examination is clearly visualized and the name placed on the appropriate area this here and it is out of region of interest it is out of roi so the conclusion of this radiograph is radiograph is not acceptable because it is has exposure factor is inadequate is inadequate and there is no collimation border so the graph examination should be repeated last but not least is my uh, my references there are three there are six of them there are three main references that i use which is for ranger Okay, book guide to radiography image evaluation and radiography image analysis ebook. So these three books is my main references to finish this slide. Meanwhile, for these three website, I used to just add on to and more understanding in my presentation. So that's all from me. I hope you all can understand well in my presentation. If you if you guys have any questions. Just comment it in our group. Okay. InsyaAllah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.